Hello and welcome back to, I believe it's already the eighth uh, coaching session uh, I had with uh, Chili. Um, now it, it is already a little bit late in the evening when I'm uploading this video. Uh, I don't really have a, uh, a schedule about these things, but uh, maybe uh, that's okay. Um, and in this video, uh, I selected a, a part where we were trying to unravel uh, a game I was uh, struggling with. Uh, it is in the Reti. Uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed it. And uh, let's uh, let's just get to the video. Second game. Knight f3, d5. We get a perfect. And this is perfect, not only because you you remember to play c4 first, but because this allows a nice way against this bishop. And I think I've mentioned in the past, when they fianchetto like this on the queen side on d7, we always have the possibility of taking and making their pawn take back and block their bishop completely. Yeah. So what I would do is I'd play d4 first, bishop b7, and then I take immediately. So you did play the same thing um, after knight c3. So knight c3, castles, and then takes. But notice how different the position gets from, from this to now c takes before knight c3. c takes d5, e takes, knight c3, castles, bishop f4 with our game plan of playing knight b5, knight bb7, and then we're immediately adding pressure here. And it's not easy to deal with this. Probably the best way is to play... What's that? Now, what's the difference in the other move order then? The difference is they can play c6. Like c6 here. And they stop our ideas of playing knight e5. Where, 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 really where, where did I lose the tempo? I don't, I don't see it. Also takes takes... Yeah, I guess they could play c6 here. Um, I like taking first, again, through that um, line of thinking that if we're playing for a strategic plan and we want it to go accordingly, it's always best to play the more give them it. So I like playing c takes first. Okay. Because if we play knight c6, then, sorry, knight c3, it could be that they find a way to defend it. So I like playing the more forcing line first, a capture rather than an attack. Okay. So, I, I, yeah, I don't think you're losing your temper uh, per se, but uh, let's see. So this, yeah, it's exactly the same position. And if they play c6 now, which is too late, we get to play this very nice move, which is knight to d6. And if we take this bishop, we get the bishop pair. Yeah. And if they don't allow us to take, we still get the bishop pair. And this is pretty nice. So I love the bishop pair. And this is something that I feel is uh, very, very strong if we get a position like this. Because you can do so much on these dark squares. Especially since you've got all these holes to, to play around. Yeah. So. Yeah. So they do stop this. I love rook c1 as well. This is all correct. I like a3 to stop them from playing knight b4 and any kind of shenanigan like that. Uh, they do get knight c7, however. And the idea of knight c7 is maybe at some point they play knight to e6 and attack our bishop, which uh, is sort of misplaced if we can't play stuff like bishop g5 or bishop e3 effectively. And we can't play bishop b3 because of knight g4, and they chase away our bishop. Yeah, so... I, I remember this position. I was spending a lot of time here figuring out a game plan, to be honest. Because of knight, uh, knight here. Yeah. I looked at this, and um, what I concluded from setting up this lesson was there's just no way around it. We're going to have to... Uh, give up our bishop pair in this case 
but that isn't necessarily bad. It just means the way we need to play the position is different. And we need to notice to make this uh, very efficient what the benefits, like the pros and cons of each side are. And one of the major cons of this position will forever be this bishop, which isn't really that great. And our bishop has the great potential of being a very strong piece. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the major aspects of the position. And the engine recommends playing stuff like e3. And maybe if you play, well, let's just say the simple move first. I would play queen c2 developing, just adding a piece to the board. Knight e6. I think the engine wants something like this. Hmm. And then playing this kind of structure here, where all our pawns are on dark squares, and uh, we have very good control of the dark squares, especially since uh, the bishop can't do anything on this side of the board, which is nice. And uh, playing something like this, I'm not a fan of this g takes in this specific position. There are positions, positions which you can play this. But I would instead play knight e6, sorry, yeah, knight e6, bishop e5. And then if they really want to play knight g4 and take our bishop, then I'm fine with it because at least now we get a very strong knight, which adds pressure to c6, uh, which yeah, is a bit yeah. more simpler. Yeah, but you also keep uh, your uh, structure intact. Yeah. Yeah, and if they want to kick this knight out really badly, it's okay if we reroute we re to a better square with like knight b3. And that gives us ideas of maybe even bishop to h3 at some point, if the position allows it, and play along this weakness they've created. So this I like, this knight e5 move. Um, I, don't, I didn't really understand the, the points of um, knight e4. Sorry, knight a4. Uh, what, was, what was the thought here? Uh, what was my idea? Um, trying to remember this. Um, because there was an idea. <laughs> mm -hmm, of course. What was it again? Oh, I, d I don't know. But it had something to do with this move coming. And or was I trying to go here to put pressure on the pawn somehow? Or was that the idea? Maybe, maybe that was the idea. Here, here. And then the, the, the pawn is actually uh, hanging. So if we got this position or, with knight e6, or did I wanted to take the knight? I don't know. I I don't I don't fully remember anymore. But I think it had something to do with the knight coming here. Okay. Yeah. Because if we did see this line with knight here, we'd ha we would have to play g takes, and we'd get this structure, which again isn't bad. It's playable. Uh, I'm not a fan of having this knight here though, because it takes away a lot of our possibilities. And um, I mean, they're probably never gonna be able to play c5 properly anyways. Um, so I don't think we need the knight covering this. And there's really not that many ideas we can play for with knight on uh, a4. No. Maybe it's better to keep the knight on, on c3 just to give ourselves some more possibilities for the future and uh, nothing clear now i mean that we could even play some two knight e6 and then just drop back we could do this i think this would be closer to equal for black but it is as well very playable so this would be fine i think although this yeah maybe maybe not well, actually, I'm not that terrified of this move. They do this. Um, still looks fine. We can still play e3 and stop everything. Okay. Yeah, I'd go with queen c2 here. Queen c2, this, bishop b5. And at least gets a very active knight, which was kind of the idea you were looking for yeah. to begin with. Yeah. 
maybe even some tricks. Ah, Always got to be aware of when they play this move. We may have tricks of, um, well, let's say this, this, we can play this move, yeah. possibly. But we could have uh, just, take, uh, we, we could no, have taken a pawn, right, in the previous move. Or not? No, here, no, but here we probably could. Yeah, takes. Perfect. There you go. Yeah. So this would be the way. So rook c8, knight e5, we do get this. I see. So if they take on f4 now, you take on c8. And then they take, take. Okay. h6. I like the queen reinforcing this. This is too much. Um, you definitely cannot do this. Okay, white to play. White to play. Yeah. White to play. Um, um, hmm. Now I'm looking at sacrifices, but uh, I think we just retreat, right? We kind of have to. There's a there's a move that gains us a positional advantage, and it's not bishop e three. Hmm. Hmm. Well, there, there, there is this move takes takes in here, but yeah, that's it. Is it that? That's the position. But am I yes, not? Am I not, am I not losing material then? Or is no, it because if we take and they take us here, we get this rook, and that's very nice. And if we take here and they take now, we can just drop back, and now we have a knight to. Knight to g6. Ah, yeah, so you... we've made the yeah yeah a permanent yeah. weakness. So we yeah. can drop the bishop back after. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. they try and trade it off, knight knight g6, rook f6. We defend this. Queen e8, forcing us to take, but we're happy with this position. And uh, I will follow this up with f4, with the idea of completely breaking open everything, and also making this pawn even harder to uh, push forwards, which looks nice. Hmm. And again, they're still left with a terrible bishop. We can bring this knight back into the game. If they ever take, I mean, takes looks really good. We still have good control over the square. I don't think they are allowed to play stuff like this. Yeah, definitely not. Yeah, maybe if they push now, we play take just a really simple example we could get something like this and uh, although they have this maybe maybe not maybe not maybe this comes a bit slower well but i i do believe in the end game there i think or is it in too this risky? position or is it too too risky mm. Let's evaluate this e pawn because that's the major problem here. And they do have this push, which could be yeah. kind of annoying as well. They do get their bishop very active. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, maybe not. I, yeah, I, I don't think I'd go for this end game, but it definitely feels right here to play to play bishop f four. It definitely feels right. Let me check. And what if you don't take and, and take the uh, a6 pawn instead of that? Yeah. 
Yeah. So this would be what the engine recommends. And this mm. does make sense. Because if they play stuff like check, we can play push, take and check. This just looks crushing. Probably mate, right? Yeah. Something like this. Mm. Yeah. So that was the line. Mm. King g7, rook c2. I would play here queen d3 with the same idea, but stronger now. Now the threat's to play bishop takes e6, followed by a queen g6 check. Ah, yeah, so yeah, they... yeah, 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 I see it. Now, now I see it, yeah. And after this, maybe even knight f7 winning the exchange would be nice. Yeah, and this is a problem because we now allow them to play knight e4 here and then we kind of have to move the queen back in an awkward position f5 yeah it's complicated uh very complicated we can take here Okay, some more calculation. Why to play? Hmm. Um. Okay, so my piece is hanging here. That's a problem. I, th I was thinking about this move, but I don't think that's a good move. On takes, takes. Also, my bishop is hanging here. Um, I don't think that's good. Takes, takes. Well, there are some alignment issues if I, if I play and he takes maybe there could be something right well, the knight is always defending there as well yeah I, I, I honestly Chile I, I have no idea it's uh, there's too much going on for me to uh, to organize this in my uh, in my head <laughs> Yeah. It's um, it plays around the whole point of you playing uh, d takes c5, which is maybe well you have so many pieces hitting this right, so it makes sense to play around this. So uh, it would be f3 indeed takes, and we can play uh, a slower move. If we were to take here, we'd be losing two pieces, which wouldn't be good enough for us. But we can play bishop takes here, and after this move we can um, negate him from taking this and play takes, which also takes away a defender of this square. And now we could indeed play bishop takes here. And uh, this would be like the best we could get. And I mean, uh, we are down a piece, mm -hmm. but they do have a nice dated pawn. We have many active pieces. This king looks very vulnerable, whereas our king looks pretty safe from uh, this standpoint here. So I would be, uh, I'd be fine with playing this position here. I okay. think it's okay. Sometimes you just need to uh, accept the reality of the position, and uh, if this is the best we can get, we need to play something like this, um, being down a piece. Because from here, there really isn't any good squares for our knight to go to. It's uh, already trapped. Yeah, true. So, uh, takes, takes, knight e3. It's 
take, 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 okay. Okay. Hmm. I feel the more pieces we trade off, it benefits them more than us. Okay. What is the biggest problem of this position for black? King. Yes, and we can immediately take advantage of this, not only because this king is exposed, but because we have tactical motifs in the position. One of the tactical motifs that we have being this move, which if we could play this would be just winning a queen. So we can play stuff like queen d4 here, and if they block with their bishop, we're going to win a pawn, and uh, we're going to be taking this queen here. Possibly following up by taking this bishop position allows it. It does seem like after, like let's say, king back takes, takes, there is a lot of pressure here. This would have to be well calculated. Uh, is he winning if he plays knight takes? Question. No, right? Then I take here and. You could also just take here, to be honest, if you uh, really ah, like, take the knight. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks okay. It looks okay. And if they play like queen here, which is the idea that they take away this tactical motif, now we just win a queen pawn because the queen cannot take this. So this would also be uh, ah, quite nice. Of the pin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So f3 now, take, take, interesting. I would, yeah, I'd play knight c4 here. If we take this, then we gain back our piece, but they have two very strong pawns. Yeah, this, this, this looks good for Maybe them. Maybe it's a problem. Yeah, I did went for it because, well, I get my piece back. Um, yeah, but yeah, honestly, I was I, I was uh, hoping for a perpetual somewhere. Uh, Got it. Uh, yeah, Queen G four. I'd play. This looks quite problematic just because of this, and uh, I mean, maybe even ideas of Bishop here and then push could be a problem. G5 also annoying because it's taking a, a piece away. Can we play rook f1 here? Rook f1, uh, take, king take, bishop here. No, because then we play queen takes, right? Or do we? Take, take, take. Uh, yeah, opposite colored bishop endgame if we can get it. Hmm. Although it's also not a guarantee. Um, one thing about these positions is you know that opposite bishops by themselves are a hundred percent a draw, but when there's other pieces on the um, both bishops do very well in controlling the color, so it becomes a, a matter of who is the player attacking? So, um, if we get all these light square, uh, all these light squares dominated, and mm -hmm. we have the initiative to start attacking, their light squares are going to be very exposed. But if they have the initiative and they have opposite colored bishops with like a queen, let's, then it can be quite, uh, quite difficult to play these positions. The way I would play this with with the black pieces and the line I just showed with the uh, rook f1 kind of stuff, um, I would just avoid the queen trade, 
keeping the queens on, playing moves that try and not give up the initiative to, to white, and play along those lines. At the very worst case scenario, there's a repetition or opposite colored bishop endgame. So it's very low risk for black, but high mm -hmm. reward. Okay. So uh, yeah, this, this is a, a tough position to play, I'll be honest. I see. Can we do this? No, because there's a uh, queen f2, right? Queen um... f2. Hmm. Hmm. Oh yeah, that looks uh, that looks not good. F two, rook d one, take take. Okay, maybe not immediately, but it is lurking. So I think he would be able to get away with this, with let's say queen f two, rook d one. He takes. Yes, has to be with the queen. Rook d one. Queen F2 now. I'm always looking for this move. Oh, we have it. We have it. Okay, we have this move. Yeah. I and know. the idea is we take here and we get a perpetual. Of course, you can't queen take on. And this would just be a perpetual. Hmm. Unfortunate. Or I missed that. If they don't want to go for this and they play like queen back, then we're happy to trade into this because this is just a oh, now we are winning an end game where we're plus two. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh... Well, that was it. It went quickly. Uh, I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If so, please like, subscribe, or leave a comment. I would really appreciate it. Also, you can check out Chili's channel. His info is findable in the description. And. Uh, I want to thank you for watching and I hope I will see you back next time. Goodbye.